Now that we have discussed the concept of voltage for electrical circuit as well as the concept of current, let's talk about resistance. Our third piece of puzzle before we invoke Ohm's law that relates voltage, current, and resistance. So just as in a hydraulic circuit, if let's say you have, um, let's say, you know, before we discuss the hydraulic circuit, let's say we have water flowing through a pipe, okay? So here is point A, here is point P, and the pressure at point A is more than pressure at point B, and as a result, uh, the water can flow in this direction, then you have some friction that is experienced by the water flowing through the pipe. You have friction at the surface where the water is in contact with the, with the pipe. At the same time, the, the various layers of the water, they're rubbing against each other and that causes some friction as well. So there is always some loss in pressure, right? And we also know that the longer this pipe is, so let's say this is the longer this pipe is, longer the pressure drop is going to be, uh, larger the pressure drop is going to be. Uh, we also know that if we made this to be a um, wider diameter pipe, then the pressure drop would be you know, much less. Okay, so resistance depends on all, all these factors when water or any fluid flows through a pipe or, or a tube, okay? Now, in, in, um, just as in hydraulic circuit, in electrical circuit, we can have resistance appear in different ways. Uh, so in hydraulic circuit, the resistance can appear, can appear naturally like the friction, but can, can it also appear because you have an external load that's providing resistance. So for example, if you have a pump, if you have a pump, and this pump is taking water from a reservoir where the pressure is, let's say, zero, uh, and then the water comes out with positive pressure from the pump, and then you're driving a turbine, Okay, and then the water goes back into the reservoir at zero pressure. So this is the direction of the flow of the water. Then this this uh, turbine over here is presenting the resistance or the load. So in this case, the the load or the resistance is appearing naturally. But there are situations when we want to regulate the flow of the water through a pipe, and we can artificially create resistance or obstruction to reduce the flow of the water. So for example, over here, we may put some baffles like these, you know, something like this, okay? Uh, and as a result, what is going to happen is that as the water flows through this, now it has to go through, you know, all these uh, tortuous path, and as a result, the, the flow is going to be reduced. And that's putting artificial restriction or the resistance into the hydraulic system to reduce the flow of the water. And you could do something similar with elect electrical circuits as well. So for electrical circuit, the situation is analogous. So this, so if I have to form an equivalence of something like this, I have my, you know, cell, or I may have a battery, and typically batteries have multiple cells. In this case, it's two cells I'm, I'm showing. And then I have my, you know, I don't know, maybe this is a motor, okay, and that's connected. Or it could be equivalent to a light bulb or an LED or something like that, okay. So now, this is positive, this is negative, and the current is going like this, and it's driving the motor. And let's say this is a 6-volt battery, and the motor is also rated for 6 volts, then all the 6 volts of the potential that exists across the battery is being used up to drive this motor of 6 volts. So in this case, motor is presenting that resistance or the load for you, right? That's a naturally occurring load, and you are trying to do work uh, on the motor in doing it. But then, like, like with the hydraulic circuit, you can introduce the baffles to reduce the flow, like we did over here. You can also introduce what we call the man-made registers, okay, that look like, you know, these. So we have something called fixed registers. So we call fixed registers. So fixed registers have a fixed resistance value. And the unit for resistance is ohm. And we also write it as a Greek symbol, you know, omega. That's the unit for the register. So the fixed registers have a fixed resistance. So for example, something like this may be given as a resistance of, I don't know, 100 ohm, okay, or 200 ohm or 300 ohm, and there are a variety of those out there. Then you also have something called variable registers. You have variable registers, which are very useful when you need actually not one particular resistance value in a circuit, but maybe a range of resistance value depending on what your application is. So for example, um, in a stereo system, you have a knob, and when you rotate the knob, you can increase or decrease the volume of the sound coming out of the stereo system. And the way you are doing that actually is by employing a variable register, which can change its resistance. So as you rotate the knob, your resistance value changes from something to something. So if you want to increase the volume, then you lower the resistance. As a result, more current can flow through the circuit. Um, if you have a dimmer switch in your home, you know, something like what is shown over here, as you move this uh, knob up and down, 
um, along this direction, you are essentially changing the resistance in the circuit, and those are called variable registers. In your mechatronics kit, you have a rotary potentiometer. Potentiometer is an example of a variable register. There are other devices that act as variable registers as well. And as you rotate this knob, you basically change the resistance between the two points. So, for example, if you you know connect measure the resistance between these two points. Uh, you can find out uh, um, how the resistance changes from less than zero ohm to something. So I think the one that is given to you in your kit is rated for 10k ohm, which means that you can change this resistance from 10, zero to 10,000 ohm. Okay. Variable registers in the circuits are usually indicated by you know something like this, or the potentiometer. If you have those, they can be indicated by like that. Okay. So this essentially shows you. Uh, one way of uh, drawing the, the symbols for the variable registers or the potentiometer. In this video, we will talk about how to read resistance value of a fixed register. So we've seen before that fixed registers come in different uh, varieties, but one thing that's common to all of them is that uh, they have different colored bands printed on them okay now if you hold the the uh, the fixed register in your hand in a way so that the three or four bands uh, are together on one side and there is a solitary band on the right hand side so you can see in this case these three bands are together and this fourth band the solitary one is a little bit towards the right and it's farther from the three bands the first three bands which are sort of closely spaced towards each other that will be easy to read what the resistance value is so depending on the color coding of these bands you will get different registers and you can read what those values are to read those values you would need a, a table and that table is you know given to you over here so what we have to do is we have to first of all count how many bands we have in the register and most common configurations are four band registers like shown over here but you can sometimes also have five band uh, registers so let's discuss each one of those uh, I think in most of the most of the registers that you have in your mechatronics kit has only four band registers so, so once again uh, make sure that you hold in the right way this is the left side this is the right side you can see that the three bands are closely spaced and then the fourth band is a little bit towards the towards the right farther from the first three bands and and that allows us to make sure that we are we're looking at the right band okay so for each color of the band, you have a number associated with it. So for example, let's look at this example for A. The first band is green color. So the first band is green color. So from this table, we will we see that you know green is five. Okay, so the first number that we get for this is five. And then the second one is blue, which is six. So we have the six. So that's the second uh, number that we get. And then the third one, the red one, is actually defined as a multiplier. So we look into the multiplier column and we see the red corresponds to, uh, no, not, not this one. This is the violet, actually. Um, it is uh, 100, right? So that's the multiplier, 100 ohm. So this would be 56 times 100 ohm. That would be the value. So that's 5,600 ohm. And then the last one is, is the tolerance, which is gold over here. So that's plus minus 5%. So that's plus minus 5%. So the resistance value of A is 5,600 plus minus 5%. Okay. So the resistance values are never fixed because of the manufacturing issues. They're always given a range. Okay. So more expensive registers will be in a very small tolerance range, something like, you know, shown over here, that's plus minus 0.5%. That's much tighter uh, tolerances for you. So that's how, you know, we basically read the resistance value based on the color given to you. Now let's look at the example B. So for example B, the first band is, is brown. So that would be one. And the second one is uh, is yellow, so that would be four, okay. And the third one is uh, is blue. Is that blue? Yeah, okay. So that's blue. So or it could be purple. Um, well, let's say it's blue. Okay, so that would be hundred. Well, the blue is this one. So that's purple actually. Hundred forty-seven. And then the fourth band is multiplier. And notice that it is in the in case of B, we have five bands, right? So the first three bands will give you the first three numbers, and the fourth one will give the multiplier which is black, so that's one ohm, so that's into one ohm, okay, plus minus, the green is the tolerance, that's 0.5%. So, so the value is 147 plus minus 0.5% ohm, that's the resistance value. Let's call this R1 and this is R2, okay. Now, next, next question would be, is there an easy way to basically remember this table in case this table is not given to you? And actually there is. So if you look at this table, 
we're starting with the black color and then we have the brown and then we have the red the orange yellow green blue violet gray and white okay so if we have the black color here so this is the black then the opposite color of the black is of course white so we are here and the next two black is the brown okay and then the next two white is gray which is basically a darker shade of white and you can think of brown as a lighter shade of black and then if you look at these colors here violet blue green that's basically your co colors in the rainbow right so you write it like this v b g y o r and you may have your own way of re remembering this but the way i remember this is why i call it whip pure so you have the violet blue green yellow orange and red and we now can write the numbers we know this is zero this is one this is two three four five six seven eight up to nine okay now the tolerance is something that you kind of have to remember so gold is plus minus five percent silver is plus minus ten percent and those are the two most common colors for the tolerances so first column okay this that's the first column right so this is the first band then the second band is basically same right it's identical so zero one two three four five six seven eight and nine now the third band which let's say this is the multiplier as the multiplier then the multiplier is actually starting with 1, 10, 100. You can see this is this is all changing by a factor of 10. So this can be written as 10 power 0, 10 power 1, 10 power 2, 10 power 3, 10 power 4, 10 power 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10 power uh, 9, right? Except that we really don't go for gray and white being 10 power 8, 10 power 9. Those are very, very large values. So that's sort of like an easy way to, you know, remember... Um, what these numbers are for different colors so you can always make this table okay you can always make this table because this is basically created in a very organized way okay and that's if let's say the table is not given to you but we'll see that another way to measure the resistance value of a fixed register would be to use multimeter and we'll see that in another video